So here's what we want to do. We want to focus on the probability generating function of this, uh, of this S. So how would that uh, go? So if you look at the probability generating function of S evaluated in Z, what you're then looking at is the expected value of Z to the power S. S is a compound, um, compound uh, sum random variable. So you can approach this with the tower rule for the um, expectations. So you're going to condition on what is the value of uh, the random variable n in your compound sum. And if you write down this uh, expected value, you could say what is then, or I could say in a first term, I want to focus on this n taking the value of zero, right? And then in later terms, I will focus on n going from one to plus infinity. And I want to focus there on the expected value of z to the power x1 up to xn, given that n is equal to n. And I need to multiply with the probability that n is equal to 2, right? So what I'm doing here is I'm focusing on this expected value over n. And I say, yeah, what if the n is taking a value uh, of 0? And what if n takes values strictly positive, uh, strictly positive, strictly larger than zero? I'm going to split it up uh, like this. And continuing then, yeah, of course, what I have here is the expected value of z to the power is zero. So that's just one. So this reduces, this first term reduces to p0, or the probability that n is equal to zero. And then I've got my sum for one running over n going from one to plus infinity. And what I got there is the expected value of a product. It's the product running over j, let's say, of z to the power xj. I'm going to use the independence between the xj and the n. Yeah? And I need to multiply with the probability that n is equal to n. Yeah? So these are, or what I'm doing here is relying on our independence assumptions for the compound risk model, which I formulated earlier on. Okay. Now, if you look at, at, uh, at the expression over here, so if you look at the expected value of the product of z to the power xj, and again, you rely on the independence between the xj random variables, then you know that this can be written as the product of the expected values. And because they all take the same distribution, I can see this as the probability function, probability generating function of x evaluated in z to the power n. Yeah? So here I'm using our identical distribution, uh, identical distribution assumption in the compound risk model, right? So putting this all together, what I retrieve here is p0 plus the sum over n of pn times the probability generating function of x evaluated in z to the power n, right? So uh, combining all the terms, I could say this is the same as going from 0 to plus infinity and using my pn times the probability generating function of x evaluated in z to the power n. So what I recognize here is the probability generating function of n, but evaluated in the px evaluated in z, right? And this last step, uh, why is that? Because you could say, well, this guy over here, it's like the expected value uh, over the distribution of n, the expected value of px uh, z to the power to the power n, right? That's what we recognize here, and that's the same, or that reminds us of the definition of a probability generating function, where of course this uh, probability um, generating function of n evaluated in z would be the expected value of z to the power. So that's what we recognize over here, um, and which allows us to, to write the probability generating function of the compound sum S 
by putting together the probability generating functions of both n and x. Yeah, so that was what I was um, referring to. Um, this also will allow me to write down an expression for the expected value of s and the variance of s. Uh, so that's going to be our next uh, our next step, um, which we can achieve by looking at the connection between our probability generating functions and our uh, moment generating functions, um, the connection between them and the moments of our random variables. Yeah? So this was for my probability generating function. I could do something similar uh, with a completely similar uh, reasoning in a similar way. I could say something about the moment generating function of S evaluated in Z. That would be the expected value of e to the power Z times S. And if you work in an exact same kind of reasoning, that would reduce to, to, to oh, that's a typo. That would reduce to the following construction. Should be like this, right? So this was the third option in the quiz. Um, but that, of course, is only valid if you're looking for the moment generating function of S, not for the probability generating function. So what I wanna, what I can do now is. Well, recall what we did earlier on. We, uh, if we work with, what was it again? If we work with a probability generating function, and if you evaluate the first order derivative of the probability generating function in one, you'll get the expected value of n. If you would take the second order derivative, evaluate in one, you get the expected value of n times n minus one, right? And so on. So I guess this is something we did in the chapter on um, discrete distributions, right? And with the moment generating function, we've got something similar. But for the moment generating function, you could say, if you look at the moment generating function of X, you take the K order derivative, you evaluate in zero, then you will have the K moment of my random variable x. Yeah? So I know that these relations hold and I want to combine them now to say something about the expected value of s and the variance of s. And this derivation on itself is not so important, but what you get out of it is very important because that's something we're often going to use. If you need to say something about the expected value of s or the variance of s, you're going to use the formulas that uh, we're about to derive uh, right now, yeah? So use that here. So use that here. And what do you see then? Well, if you look at the, if you want to get the expected value of S, what you need to do is you need to take the first order derivative of the moment generating function of S and evaluate that in zero. But if you look at the um, moment generating function of S, it's, you can obtain it by putting two functions together, right? So if you need to take the derivative here, you need to apply the chain rule, right? Because you have the probability generating function of n evaluated in the moment generating function of x evaluated in a certain point, right? So if you need to take the derivative with respect to z, you need to do the chain rule. And if you apply your chain rule, what you get here is, the derivative of the probability generating function evaluated in the moment generating function evaluated in zero multiplied with the first order derivative of the moment generating function of x evaluated in zero, right? If we look at this uh, moment generating function evaluated in zero, then we do e to the power zero. So we get a one over here, right? And if you then put these um, expressions that we had earlier on together, you'll recognize that you get the expected value of x multiplied with the expected value of n. And I had to put it the other way around, right? So this is an important one. Uh, you can also derive it in a different way uh, using the, the tower rule for expect, expected values. But this is another way to look at it. And I find here that the expected value of the compound sum 
is the expected value of the frequency multiplied with the expected value of the severity under certain independence assumptions. And I can continue with that if I uh, want to do the second order moment of S. What I then need to do is I need to take the second order derivative of the moment generating function, evaluate it in zero. So once again, I need to do my chain rule. But now I have to start from the expression for the first order derivative that I have over here, yeah, where I also recognize a product of functions. So I need to do the chain rule and I need to combine it with um, taking the derivative of a product of, of two functions. Yeah. So if I would put it in full, I get the second order derivative evaluated in R1, uh, multiplied with the first order derivative plus then, uh, no, and I need to, I, I get that squared because of my chain rule, right? And then I have the second order derivative of the moment generating function evaluated in zero multiplied with this. Yeah, so you can check that um, for yourself. So I combine here the chain rule with taking the derivative of uh, a product of uh, two functions. So if I evaluate everything, I get the second order derivative of the probability generating function of n evaluated in one. I get the expected value of x squared. I recognize the second order moment of x and I recognize here the expected value of n, right? And then for this, uh, for this one, uh, I also know what that is gonna become. That's gonna become the expected value of n multiplied with n minus one. So working like this, I get the expected value of s squared and I know that it is going to be like this expected value for S. I had the following expression. And now, of course, if I have the expected value of, of S and of S squared, then I can just put these two uh, guys together to deduce the variance, um, the variance of S. And the variance of S is then expected value of S squared minus the expected value of S squared. And then it's a matter of manipulating the expression. Well, you can see that on the uh, you can see that on the on the sheets being done. So I'm going to leave that as a small exercise for you. But what you eventually retrieve is the expected value of n times the variance of x plus the variance of n times the expected value of x squared. Yeah, and. This is a complicated derivation, but the end result is very important. I do not expect you to know this by heart, naturally, but you need to be aware that it exists and that you can quickly come to the variance of S, if S is a compound risk uh, random variable, by relying on the uh, expected value and the variance of the underlying frequency and severity distribution. So that's something I wanna be able to use, I wanna uh, play.